Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and this week I've been driving the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tenale Veloce. Up front is a 1.3 liter turbocharged inline four as well as a plug-in hybrid system and down below is a six-speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be making this video because I've spent the last seven days driving this Tenale and this is my first ever Alfa Romeo press vehicle. I've driven the Tenale here on the channel before but it was actually at a press event earlier this year that was the TI trim level and so I didn't have a whole lot of time with that car. I only had that car for about an hour, so I didn't really get to know it all that well. But for this, I've spent the last seven days driving this car. I have a lot of good things to say. I have a couple not so good things to say, so stick around to the end. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle and have it reviewed here on the channel, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that plug-in hybrid system under the hood. Well, the gasoline engine is a 1.3 liter turbocharged inline four that makes about 180 horsepower on its own. But the plug-in hybrid system and motor adds an additional 105 horsepower, making the all system horsepower 285, which is a fantastic number. I like the hybrid system and we'll talk about range and fuel economy here in a second, but I think it actually works really, really well in this car and I'm happy to see it here. Now, like I said, paired to it is a six speed automatic. Don't have any worries or issues with it and I'm happy to see that. Last but not least, the Tenale is all wheel drive. However, lower base model vehicles and especially non-plug-in hybrid vehicles will have front wheel drive if that's something you want. So how does it feel to actually drive the Alfa Romeo Tenale Veloce? Well, I think it actually has a really nice driving experience. From where I'm sitting, been pleasurable. It's decently quick. It doesn't feel like it's at almost 300 horsepower. Definitely doesn't feel that. It feels more in the upper 100s. But even so, I think the dynamics are nice. The steering is nice. Suspension is a little stiff for an around town vehicle, but Alfa Romeo has always sort of had that sporty personality, so I can't fret too much. Fuel economy and range. So this is a plug-in hybrid vehicle, which allows you to drive on full electricity for around 30 miles and around town, that's amazing. Charging has been a little bit of a hassle. Now, if you charge at home, this will take about nine to 10 hours on a standard wall outlet. But if you have a level two charger installed, you're looking at about two and a half hours. Now it's just shy of most chargers out and about have a two hour limit. So if you are doing some shopping, just keep that in mind, you might not get a full charge. But I love the fact that it is a plug-in hybrid. When it is charged up, you're getting around 40 to 50 miles of the gallon. I saw, I saw about 45 miles of the gallon average Average when driving with the electric power helping out. And once that battery's depleted, I've been averaging around 30 miles to the gallon, which is still a pretty good number for modern vehicles. So with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a completely digital gauge cluster, which I like and dislike. Off to the left is the speedometer, and I love that they gave this a sort of old style look. It almost looks straight out of the 1930s or 40s, where Alfa Romeo had certainly one of its heydays. Then we do get a lot of screen customization, which I like too. It does give you a lot of good information if you want it. However, I think the way that you select this is kind of weird, and we'll talk about that in a second, but overall, the gauge cluster is fine. On the steering wheel on the left, we have our adaptive cruise options, as well as the start-stop button. This certainly took some getting used to over the week that I had the vehicle. The start-stop button is on the steering wheel for whatever Alfa Romeo reason this vehicle's platform sister, the Dodge Hornet, does not have the start stop button here. So something to keep in mind. Off to the right, we do have our volume skip track and pages. So this little scroll wheel does multiple things. If it's not selecting anything in the gauge cluster, it's to skip track, which I couldn't find for several days where the skip track button was. But then if you use the two squares icon to the left of that and select something on the gauge cluster, then this is used as the selector dial for your different gauge options. Really wish that it was labeled better or just a better system. It felt kind of clunky. The overall steering wheel is very nice and I love the paddle shifters around the back. They are metal and they feel fantastic. Off to the left, we do have a climate control vent. And then we have our gas cap release, trunk release, headlight switches down below. And moving out of the door, we have three levels of memory seats, lock and unlock, power mirrors, and power windows. 
Moving into the center, we do get our infotainment screen. This offers wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, I feel like the font on the Apple CarPlay is smaller than it is in other vehicles. I don't know if maybe this is an optical illusion or something, but it definitely looks formatted very oddly. I can also look at a 360 camera while parked or during slow speeds. However, the actual backup camera is definitely not worth the $57,000 price tag. It has very low frame rate. So when you back up at any sort of speed, it gets really choppy and sort of disorienting. However, I can also change the interior lighting, which is something I have loved in my time with the vehicle. And you get five different options. And I love the way that they did it. It looks like a very expensive like hotel lobby. And that is most certainly a compliment in this case. Down below the infotainment system, we do have two climate vents and the hazard switch that are up above the climate controls. I love that this does get physical climate controls. However, the heated seats are ran through the screen which I don't love, but these climate controls are very nice, very tactile, and they've been wonderful to use. Down below, we have the 12-volt outlet, USB inputs, a wireless charger with the nice Alfa Romeo badge, and then off to the left, we have our drive mode. So we do have the DNA system. D is going to be dynamic and sporty. N is going to be natural and normal and A is going to be efficient. I can't ever remember what the A stands for here, but A is like efficiency basically. Also, when you do put it into dynamic, you can adjust the suspension. Then moving into the center, we do have the shifter. Down below the shifter, we have our e-save button, which will use just the gasoline engine. It's almost like a swear word to say gasoline and something that's supposed to be eco. Parking assist on and parking sensors off. As well as off to the right, we do have the power parking brake and the volume scroller. So visually, this is really, really nice. But in practice, ah, I don't really love it. I prefer an actual knob. But hey, that's just me. Then we do have cup holders. We'll do a big freaking bottle test. We've now tested two other Tenales. This will be the third Tenale we've tested. And unfortunately, it fails. <laughs> Little center console behind that and the seats. The seats are eight way adjustable. They're decently comfortable. They are heated, ventilated and power as well as memory. And I think overall for a modern seat, they do a pretty good job. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonale Veloce. And a couple of things to note. First of all, my knees are hitting the seat in front of me. My head is coming close, but it's not hitting the ceiling. This is sort of a cramped back seat. This is a compact crossover, and so you're definitely gonna feel that when it comes to back seat. However, something that a lot of compact crossovers don't do, or many cars this size don't do is offer rear climate vents and this does have it so i do get two climate vents usb-c and usb-a charger i can also come here into the center pull down some cup holders that will fit my starbucks espresso 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 let me get an espresso yeah um i've always said that wrong fun fact anyway let's hop into the trunk and see what's going on back there all right around the back of the tonale hit it twice for the power tailgate and once we are back here, a couple of things to note, we do have a 12 volt outlet that only works when the vehicle is turned on. We can pull this up here. We get some spare, there are no spare tires, excuse me, but we get a couple tools, things like that, lights over here. Otherwise, nothing too crazy, but that is the trunk space of the Alfa Romeo Tonale. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is one of the best parts of the Tonale. I think it looks really, really good. We'll do the walk around here. I love the blue color. I love the styling. Very, very obviously a Alfa Romeo. I think they did a good job in making it look like that. And I don't know, just walking out to it, I got quite the smile, which is always a good sign. I do also wanna comment on the wheels. I think the wheels are absolutely to die for. I think these wheels are fantastic. Although one thing you should look out for if you are looking to buy a Tenale, these rear taillights have had condensation issues where water will collect on the inside. This particular one does not. But if you are looking at a used Tenale, something you might want to go in knowing. But with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think having driven a Tenale for seven days now, a full, full, full review and full thoughts. Well, the short of it is that I've really enjoyed driving it. I think the overall driving feel has been nice and I really adore the time that I've spent in it. Would I personally buy this car? No, two reasons. 
Price tag is 57,000. Now, base price was around mid 40s, but this is the Veloce, don't forget. So it is a little bit more expensive. And for almost $60,000, I think there are better options out there. And the other reason is reliability. I worry about that 1.3 liter turbo and the plug-in hybrid system working in complete harmony for the next 10 years. I don't have much experience with plug-in hybrids and small displacement turbo engines, so I don't know. And that alone might steer me away. Way. But after all of this, something has become very, very clear with the Tenale, and it's about Stellantis as a whole. This vehicle is built by Alfa Romeo, who is owned by Stellantis, which is a big conglomerate of a couple companies. Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Fiat, and Alfa Romeo are the main ones. And so I've come to the conclusion during my time with this car that Stellantis doesn't sell cars. Sure, their products have four wheels and a propulsion device, but they don't sell cars. Stellantis sells emotions. They sell feelings. Take a look at the Jeep. The Jeep brand feels macho. When you drive a Jeep, you feel as though you can conquer any type of terrain that is thrown your way. Now, if that's true or not, I'll let you decide, but you get that feeling. When you drive a Chrysler 300C, you have a very classy feeling. You feel like you've earned something. Those wings at the front of the car make you feel good about your purchase. And so my whole time with this Alpha, it's been a whirlwind of emotion. People in my close circle of friends, they always ask what car I have this week. They know it's part of my job. And I'll tell them, yeah, I have a Ford, I have a Hyundai, I have a Toyota, whatever. But this week, when I said, I have an Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo? Ooh, what's that like? A little Italian stallion for the week. Little this, little that. And that was fun. I had a business meeting that was about an hour away that I had to attend and I broke out my new sweater, collared shirt, my nicest pants, and I pulled the key out of my pocket and I saw that little Alfa Romeo badge, that snake eating a man. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna devour this meeting like that snake is devouring that man. I felt good. Walking to and from the Alfa Romeo, I just felt cool. And then I found another Alfa Romeo to park next to, a Julia, which I love that car as well. And it just set everything on fire in a very positive way. Set my heart on fire, I should say. And no Tums would take out that blaze. And so would I personally buy this? No, but you can't deny the feelings that Stellantis gives you. Driving a Dodge Challenger Hellcat a word that most people would scoff at makes you feel like the man. You feel like Batman driving around in that car. And the Tonale is no different. Stellantis is selling you an emotion, a feeling, and that's something to take home. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Alfa Romeo for sending me this vehicle to drive for the last seven days. They have been wonderful to work with. I've driven like the Pacifica and the Jeep products and all that stuff. Really, really great vehicles. Huge thank you to G Schmidt for facilitating the cleaning and delivery of this vehicle in this terrible weather. And of course, the Midwestern Automotive Media Association for just being so doggone awesome. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.